Mish Mash! Kit Bash Corner! Hey ya, today we're going to be doing another chaotic Kit Bash. However, this time we're going to be much less undivided with our project as we're going to be crafting some World Leader Terminators. Or Red Butchers if you prefer. This Kit Bash is relatively simple and I'm primarily using bits from only two kits. This being the Chaos Terminators and the 8-bound kit. I'm much more of a Nurgle enjoyer, but I cannot deny that I've been slowly gravitating towards the Twisted Psychopath God in recent months. I even started a 30k army a while back, but this is actually my first dip into the 40k models. But let's not waste any more time talking, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you like what you see, and let's get into the kit bashing. Let's go. For my first model, I'll start by simply assembling the base body of the Terminator. No need to worry about the arms or any other pieces of the armor. I then begin snipping away at the chest of the Terminator. I know it looks a little aggressive, but I am being very diligent to keep the place for the head intact. I don't want to damage this by any means. I then dry fit on this chest piece from the 8-bound kit, making sure that each corner fits snugly to the core of the Terminator. Once I was content with its placement, I then begin adding a little bit of Tamiya. This will look a little ugly at first, but we'll clean it up momentarily. While this is adhering, I want to keep pressure on the chest. Not too much, of course, as we don't want to have the piece spring back from tension. But we will want to keep it firmly in place as it properly melts along with the Terminator. I'll be adding in a little bit more cement on the sides of the head case as well. I want to adhere this gap between the plate and the base body, we don't have to worry too much as we will be adding in some sprue goo to fill in these gaps, but using just a little bit of Tamiya beforehand is usually a good idea. Also on the side of this 8-bound chest, I snipped away at this weird flesh tube to better adhere to the cables on the side of the Terminator. Like I mentioned previously, we're now moving on to our good old friend sprue goo. Here I'm just filling in some gaps blatantly covering up any ugly remnants of the chipped away portions of the Terminator. I especially want to fill in the gaps between the headpiece and the chest, and I'd continually do little drive-bys with the sprue goo as I picked out the arms that I wanted to use for the Terminator. For this, I'm simply using this Chain Axe and Storm Bolter. This comes with the base kit, and I think it's perfect for a World Eater. I am completely unsure if there's any special rules for Terminators for World Eaters, I don't play the base game. But I think this works just fine, I just want to make some cool minis. And for our raging little lunatics melon, I decided to use one from the 8-bound kit as well. I wanted to use one that looks a little less corrupted, I don't want him to look like a demon. So I picked out one with a face mask. To get him to adhere better, I glued on a little piece of backing plastic from one of the Terminator helmets. The 8-bound heads are flat in the back, so they don't exactly adhere perfectly to the base kit. Because of this backing plastic, he'd fit nicely into place, and to smooth out the backing area, I'm using just a little bit of sprue goo and letting it pull to the back of the Terminator. I suggest letting the mini lay flat on his back while this dries. Just in case. Now we're just gluing on the Terminator spikes and pauldrons. Initially I wanted to use some of the 8-bound pauldrons, but they don't exactly fit all too well and I really do want to keep them intact for the actual 8-bound minis. I have great plans for those guys. But once the pauldrons and spikes are in place, I'll be doing one more go over using the sprue goo as I want the chest piece to uniformly adhere to the model. I don't want it to just look like another piece that's added onto a figure. While this dries, I'll be sure to add some more pure Tamiya to keep things from being too goopy. And with that, we've got one Terminator down. And man, I'm really happy with this guy. I know the goo looks a little chunky here, but keep in mind it will nicely smooth out as it dries. But onto our next figure, it's time to give Wally a new body. This headpiece, of course, coming from the old Berserker kit. I'm sure the new one would be perfect for these guys, but I don't have it. And the old ones have a special place in my heart as they've aged horribly. Besides the heads, of course. Anyway, I'd start by snipping the bottom of this head, and it already looks pretty cool once it's attached to the model. Whoops. But I can't not use another 8-bound chest. 
This works too damn well for Terminators. Plus, I'm only building three Terminators, and the 8 bound kit comes with 8 chest pieces, so do the math. So once more, we're going to be trimming at the chest of the original Mini. I didn't go as brutal this time at the snipping, as I had already glued his head in place. Obviously, I don't want to go full buffoon and ruin Wally's mug. Again, this chest piece aligns rather well with the tubes on the Terminator body, but we'll have to add in some more additional padding to make it look a little bit more consistent. Because I was a little less rampant with the snipping this time around, there is more apparent remnants of the Terminator armor below, which I actually don't mind too much. I could honestly go either way with covering this up with sprue goo or just leaving it as is. I think both options are visually appealing. But on the right side of the armor, we actually have a cap for a tube on the 8-bound chest. And for this, I decided to roll up some green stuff. After I rolled it into a sort of a wormy looking tube, I'd push it into place and mold it admittedly a little hastily. This will be relatively covered up by the hulking arms of the Terminator, so I'm not too worried. But I wish I gave this a little bit more love, and I wish it looked a little bit more mechanical, as this kind of feels like it'd be better placed on the Death Guard miniature. I'd also add in a little bit of green stuff to the cables on the left side. And once it was in place, I'd quickly carve it with my knife to form a similar shape to the cables. Again, this will be pretty obscured overall, so I'm not super worried about making it look spectacular. For his main weapon, I decided to give him this chain fist. You can't tell me this isn't perfect for Wally. Okay, given the Wally meme, maybe a chain axe would have been better, but we already have one in the squad, so whatever. I then added on these more regaling pauldrons, as I found the iconography and the chainmail to be a perfect fit for a world eater. Once his armor was adhered, I'd go over with a little bit more pure Tamiya, sealing up any cracks as well as adhering the green stuff a little bit better as it was close to drying. And with that... Man, this guy has one of my favorite minis I've ever built for the channel. Really not much we had to do, and he looks like an absolute monster. I am really excited to paint this guy. I love these 8-bound chests not only because of the symbols that they have for world eaters, but I love just how burly these guys are. They're like if Plague Marines ate nothing but protein. But we've got one more miniature to make. And for our last guy, I'm essentially doing the same tricks as I did previously, and I thought about keeping the chest intact, but you know the drill at this point. Once he was all carved up, this chest plate actually ended up being the best fit of the trio. I still use some sprue goo to keep it in place, but just about everything fit without a hitch. I did end up filling in the little ugly spots below, but I really started to get a good feel of how to quickly and efficiently build these guys. Keep in mind, I'm by no means an army builder, and I'm unsure if Terminators are actually really used too often for World Eaters at this point, but I was kind of shocked to see the lack of an upgrade sprue of sorts for how integral Terminators were to the World Eaters. Regardless, let's get back to the mini. For his head, I ended up doing the same trick as I did for the first figure by using a back of a Terminator helmet, but this time I glued on the backing plastic in first, and then I adhered the head on by using a little bit of sprue goo. It's kind of silly, I actually ended up using this method in the last video that I did. Worked well, I'm not sure why I didn't do it for the first mini, but we live and learn, I guess. Sort of. I don't really learn. Because of this, I didn't have to risk putting any sprue goo into the back of the head hole. While it dried, I'd poke the head around using my knife to find a pose that I liked. And then I'd add on all the weapons and extra bits of the armor. Again, I'm going simple. A power axe works perfectly for a world eater. And with that, I've got three brutal looking Terminators. I know the Terminator kit comes with five miniatures, but I feel like you can take these tricks and make your own amazing squad. And I just wanted two extra around for additional kit bash videos for other warbands. But I'm not done with these guys just yet, because you'll be seeing them again in an upcoming painting tutorial. But I think a flat might be enough for one video. If you liked what you saw, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more. It really helps. And if you really, really liked what you saw, consider becoming a channel member. You'll get some extra mishmash goodies, some extra videos, and you'll get to see stuff early. But most importantly, remember to mishmash, kit bash, and paint some fantastic miniatures. And you're gonna. I promise. See ya.